Hello and welcome. In this video, we're gonna improve our connection manager and also we are going to start creating our sub scenes so we could use them later to instantiate entities. So as you might know, in order to create a sub scene, we can select new sub scene from here and create an empty scene. Then we can choose a name for it. I'm just gonna name it sub scene. And when we click save, it's gonna create a sub scene for us. So any game object we put inside the sub scene is going to be converted into entity. For example, let's go ahead and create a plane. And when we do that, let's fix the camera on the plane. Here we go. And as you can see, when the plane is selected, we can see the components on the entity. We also can switch to authoring to see the game object components. So I'm going to increase the scale of the plane and now I'm going to align the camera with the view. So that is our plane. If we save this and if I play the game, you would expect to see the plane here in the game view, but you're not seeing it because the sub scene is not loaded inside the server world and client world. This is because we created the server world and client world manually using our auto connect bootstrap. So here we are returning false and we are doing everything inside the connection manager. So we need to change a few things in order to load the sub scenes. Let's go to the auto connect bootstrap and here I am going to set the auto connect port to zero. That's just to make sure the auto connect is not happening. Also, we need to add the preserve to our auto connect bootstrap to make sure Unity does not strip the code on build. Now in the connection manager here, instead of IP and port, I'm going to change it to lesson IP and connect IP. So lesson IP is for the server and connect IP for the client. Now, if we go further down, we have created this method to connect our worlds together. Instead of void, I am going to use I enumerator for the connect and I'm going to start it like this. So let's go and take a look at the connect function. Here we are creating the server world and client world based on our role. And here we are setting the default game object injection world. And here we are connecting the worlds together. So before we do that, I am going to find all the sub scenes in our scene. We can easily do it by using find objects by type sub scene. So if our server world is not null, then here I'm going to do a while loop and we are going to wait as long as the server world is not created. After that, we can make sure the sub scenes, which is the array that we got from here is not null. In that case, there are sub scenes in the scene. Then we're going to loop through them and we are going to create uh, parameters for them like this. And then we're going to use scene system load scene async. We're going to pass the server world and the parameters to load the sub scene with this GUID. And after that, as long as the scene is not loaded, we are going to keep updating the server world. And when all of that is done, we can go ahead and start listening using our server world. So here we can simplify this by changing it to network endpoint parse. We're going to pass the listen IP address and the port. And that's it for our server world. Now for our client world, we're going to do something similar that we did here. So as long as the client world is not created, we are going to wait. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing here with the sub scenes. But instead of passing the server world, we are going to pass the client world to our load scene async and here as well. So we're going to make sure the world is created. And then we're going to make sure all the sub scenes in our scene are loaded. So and finally here, we don't need all of this. So let's clear that. And for the endpoint, we can create a endpoint dot parse. We're going to pass the connect IP and the port. So this way we have our server and client world created and then connected to each other. 
and also all the sub scenes loaded in the scene so now if I go ahead and play the project you see that we have the plane visible in the game view and if we select our plane you see that we have our server world client world and converted sub scene for both of them we could also keep track of our connected clients inside our server system so we can create a variable here inside the server system i'm just going to name it clients and it's going to be component lookup of type network id and if we create the on create function we can assign the value for it and in the on update function we can go ahead and keep updating its value so basically it's going to keep looking in the game for any entity with network id on it and we can use that whenever we want to grab the network ID of the entity that is sending an RPC message, for example, and we can identify which client send that RPC. Right now, we can only access the source connection, which source connection is just an entity, but we can grab the network ID using this component lookup. We are going to use that later, but for now, we can leave it just like that. There's also one thing that you could do here in the preferences if you go to the entities. So there's a bunch of settings that you could change. And also if we take a build of our project now, if I place this inside the build folder in my desktop. Now if I go ahead and start the editor, we have our client and server in the editor. And if I go ahead and start the build version of my project, you can see we also have the plane here, which means the subscene is loaded on this version. So here also we have a connected client with ID of 2. Everything is still working. And now we have more control over our project. We could even control which subscene we can load. So if you have looked at the Mega City demo by Unity, you know that you can create massive worlds with excellent performance. I'm going to finish the video here. Please make sure to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.